Right, this is Maka, Greg, Unit 5, knowledge and understanding then. Right, Maka, 1.1. List of values or codes of practice relevant to the work being carried out. Um, uh, things like fire exits, um, first aid, um, risk assessment, just stuff to keep things like, in order, keep patient from stuff like that. Right, 1.2. Describe the requirements for health, safety and welfare relevant to own work, including health and safety at work act and requirements from relevant national governing bodies. Uh, so, uh, 1974, um, work, the workout manufacturer is just for like safety requirements of how to keep safe in a working environment. Yeah, and that's self and safety yeah, workouts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just for employees and generally uh, quite information. Anything else you can add on that one? One point three. Identify manufacturers' guidelines and instructions for the use of facilities and equipment. Um, it's just like how to use equipment properly without causing injuries to yourself and to other people in the, in the uh, environment, and storing equipment, just, um, keeping everything away from harm, so no equipment gets damaged, and so no one trips up on any equipment. Good. One point four. Describe why health, safety, and welfare are important in the active leisure and recreation environment to be careful in active leisure environment because um, it's just to prevent injuries again it's health and safety is matters keep everything safe and everything safe good 1.5 identify the persons responsible for health and safety in your own workplace um, that'd be like higher up than you so like security maybe and managers definitely just people higher up in the work environment than you good things like supervisors yeah one six. Outline own organisation security procedures. Um, so like CCTV, um, identification cards and stuff, fingerprints and stuff like that. Good. Two one. Describe the types of hazards that are likely to occur in own area of work and the accidents and injuries each could cause. Um, a wet floor could um, just, like, could just be some water on the floor from when it's all like sweat, so people could slip, probably bang the back of their head because it'll cause cushions and stuff. And just having equipment out somewhere you can trip up, some just stupid places to put equipment for people to get harmed. Good. Uh, why and how to identify hazards? Um, risk assessments, um, maintenance checks, just going around, making sure everything's in correct order. And if it's not, just have an out of order sign and then hopefully get someone to come around and fix it. Right. Um, list health, safety, and security checks to be followed. Yeah. Park queues, yeah. checklists, bomb threats, just stuff like that. Good. 2 4. Describe how to carry out a basic risk assessment of the types of hazards that may occur. Um, just go around the working environment and list things which could cause any risk, like um, have uh, um, switched on plugs and stuff, like water getting into the electricity and causing stuff, and just check, go around ticking off everything that's in good condition, and if it's not, just put it next to there and what was that? Two, uh, two five then. Uh, describe why it's important to get advice from a relevant colleague if unsure about hazards and risks in own workplace. Um, just how to use certain equipment, following it correctly and not doing anything stupid. That's about it, really. Um, just, yeah. Fine. Two six. Identify who to ask if unsure about hazards and risks in the own workplace. Who to ask? Yeah. Um, um, managers, um, yeah, again, supervisors, maybe if you have a colleague. Uh, yeah. Good. 2 7. Describe how to deal correctly with the types of hazards that may occur in the workplace, taking account of risks. Say that again, sorry. Describe how to deal correctly with the types of hazards that may occur in own workplace, taking account of risks. Um, just cleaning up after yourself. Um, making sure everything's been put away, make sure the floors are dry, equip them. Yeah. What's that you've got? I've got probably a risk of just cleaning. Yeah. Uh, two eight. Identify documents relating to health and safety, which may have to be completed. Um, Park queues, medical medical issues, um, questionnaires, just stuff like that. 
cartoon. Yeah. Not for your own personal use. Uh -huh. <laughs> Outline how, how to complete health and safety documents correctly. Um, sign it, date it, put it in correctly. Bang on. Four one. Describe what is meant by safeguarding and protecting the welfare of children and vulnerable adults. Keep them safe from potential harm and abuse to anyone. Describe own role and responsibilities for safeguarding, so what you are in charge of, and protecting children and other vulnerable people. Just keep an eye out for your client, making sure that they're in safe hands and that they're comfortable around the environment. And just making sure that you know where security is, just in case something does happen. Yeah. Okay. List of four types of abuse. Sexual, racial, verbal and physical. Right, fine. Uh, I want the basic indicators and impacts of each of the t four types of abuse. Inappropriate, inappropriate behaviour. Um, just being ridiculously annoying. <laughs> um, just having your own opinion on some of those ridiculous acts. <laughs> you have to swear. Yeah. Right, okay. Four five, describe the risks that individual abusers or potential abusers pose to children and vulnerable people. Um, stress, a lot of stress, because uh, it does can't take the abuse or anything anymore. And just setting a bad, bad example towards children that come to the gym. Right. Um, and just boom. Yeah. Four six, describe organisational policies and procedures in relation to safeguarding and protection, including the reporting procedures? Um, regarding people, um, like if there's like a, a fight about to happen, you get straight in the middle of it, make sure nothing happens, and um, then you call out security and stuff. And if anything does happen, you just bring in the, the police. Yeah, so you, you look after your own welfare yeah. as well yeah. first, you won't just fly straight in. All right. um, you let tell security as well, yeah? Four seven. Outline what to do if concerned about possible abuse. Report it to a member of staff and security and police. Just making sure everything stays safe and comfortable for everyone. Good. Four eight. Describe how to respond to a child or someone else disclosing abuse or concerns about abuse. Just ask them questions like, uh, "Do you know who it is and how long has it been going for? What is it?" And what sort of manner would you behave in though? In like. Uh, Concerned, gentle manner. Like, yeah. Would you Change tell someone about it? Would you yeah. not tell? Yeah. Better. You won't keep it because uh, you want to get conflict over. You want to, like, well, not conflict, but you want it to like, end before anything happens. Yeah. Four nine. Outline what to do if there are barriers to reporting on concerns. Um, so if you've got a concern in the gym. But then what if you manage to die? You're not allowed to do that. No, you just got to step back and then can't really do anything. If you can't do anything about it, you can't really do anything about it. So, but then if it was a police incident, would you would you tell the police about it? You tell the police about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. But then knowing your boundaries as well. Yeah. All right. So behaving professionally. Four ten. Identify statutory agencies which with responsibilities for safeguarding and protecting. Well, the children. Have the NSPCC, of course. Um, and just vulnerable adults, you've got the police so, and security in the gym as well. So, yeah. I went to contact statutory agencies with responsibility for safeguarding and protecting. Um, if you see any wounds or injuries that haven't happened from lifting weights or anything, but yeah, just wounds really, people's bodies that show that they've been attacked or abused. Or, yeah. Right. Outline how to contact statutory agencies with responsibility for safeguarding and protecting. Um, just ring them, ring them up, tell them what's happened, or email them if you can't get a number. So. Then what would you do? You might have to sign it so. and uh, record it, yeah. yeah. Describe why is it important to share concerns about possible abuse with others. To prevent anything happening and the person being abused can feel safe and comfortable. Describe the limits of your own competence with regard to safeguarding and protecting. Uh, when the abuse just gets out of hand, uh, you just you need police to get involved so they can do their job and you can just go back to your gym. Yeah. 
Oh, why is it important to treat information about possible abuse confidential? And again, you just want the place to feel safe and comfortable for everyone. Right. Six one list of types of accidents, injuries, and illnesses that may occur in own area of work. Um, broken bones, cuts, and bruises, stuff like that, sprains. Outline how to respond correctly to emotional distress. Um, like just call an ambulance. Might wait more. First aiders. I don't know. Emotional distress. Yeah. That way. Let's put um, recovery positions and call an ambulance. I think. And then what about talking to a client, maybe? Is it is emotionally distressed? Um, you'd have to change your tone of voice, but it's not. You can't just be like, have a sarcastic tone of voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll learn, so you make them feel comfortable again, yeah? I'll learn how to deal with accidents, injuries, and illnesses before qualified assistance arrives. So, what you'd do before, so say, an ambulance arrived? Yeah, we'd call a first aider. We'd let's see in the workplace so they can treat the injury quicker. Good. Describe how to decide whether to contact the on-site first aider or immediately call the emergency services. Um, just keep them away from any possible hazards, like if they're on the floor and there's like maybe some broken glass on the floor next to them, just make sure it's been moved away from them mm -hmm. so it doesn't get anywhere or dirty, for example. And um, if you if you know first aid, um, then treat it best you can before before any of happens. Identify who is the first who is the on site first aider and how to contact them. Um, whoever is trained to first aid, um, call them on their phone or email them. Just sit, try to get them to come as soon as they can. Describe the procedures to contact the emergency services. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. If there is any trouble. Um, or conflict, call security or police, any injuries, just call first aid or an ambulance. What number did you call then? Um, 999 or 112. Cool. Um, any fires, well, obviously you're going to call a fire brigade. Aren't you? So. Yep. 6 7, outline why it is important to protect the casualty and others inv involved from further harm. Um, feel safe, comfortable, and um, respected by other people. Right. Outline the procedures to protect the casualty and others. Um, just talking to clients. Good. Outline why is it important to, to provide comfort and reassurance? Um, to make them feel safe and comfortable again. It's everything about them, just making sure that yeah. they'll come back to you. Outline all responsibilities for reporting accidents. Um, just report it to first aid as soon as you can, or, um, or, and or an ambulance if it's necessary. Yeah. On the injury, so. Describe the emergency procedures in own place of work. So what happens at the gym? For emergency procedures, the, um, the chicken gym. In the chicken gym for emergency procedures, uh, well, if someone's done a trick and it, they've landed weird or something, and they've like torn an ankle ligament or broken anything, like when I broke my toe, first thing we did was got me out of the gym, like put me to the side of the gym, so I'm away from everyone. Then they called an ambulance, and we had we had a first stater, um, and they just couldn't really do anything because it was a broken bone. So. In the hospital. Yeah. Oh, and what instructions must be given to the people involved? Um, tell them what happened. Obviously. Yeah. Ask them what happened. Um, if they had anything to do with it, so like if they caused the injury. Um, if they have, then you can either like ban them from the gym or whatever. Just make sure they they've got a warning. Let them know that. Yeah. Oh, and organisational reporting procedures for emergencies. It's like fires, conditions, injuries, stuff. Just get everything that has the emergency. Put blue lights on. Right. Eight four. Describe the types of problems that may occur when carrying out emergency procedures. So, what sort of things that might happen? So, if you trying to undertake an emergency procedure, what have you got to do? Um, you got if you already in a situation. Let's just say like someone's broken a leg or something yep. um, and you see like an extra cut like underneath the leg or something you've got to tell someone otherwise if you don't tell anyone that could cause an infection to someone and you, you wouldn't have had the time to sort it out so it's best to report it somewhere as soon as you see right describe why problems that occur when carrying out emergency procedures should be reported to you said that yeah. I'll identify who to report the problem to the, per the person to a certain 
manager or the person that's treating the other person? Or supervisor, yeah. 